my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive. Six, seven, eight, feeling great. Hello and welcome back to Beyond Your Wildest Dreams podcast. My name is Dr. Noah DeCoyer and I'm your co-host. Today our guest is Dr. Dan Sullivan. Dr. Dan has a passion for bringing certainty to the chiropractic profession by educating on the simple science that proves that the importance of chiropractic philosophy and the influence of an adjustment. Dr. Dan travels worldwide to speak to students, doctors, and the public about the power of chiropractic, the overwhelming evidence that supports it, and the necessity it should play in today's healthcare. After graduating from Northwestern Chiropractic College in 2004, he built one of the largest practices in the profession, seeing over 1,000 visits a week. He served in the World Championships in 2010 and 11, and the Olympic Games in 2012 as the official chiropractor for the USA wrestling team. He is a graduate of the Academy of Chiropractic Philosophers Diplomate Program, and his personal mission is to help change the perception of chiropractic worldwide. Dr. Dan lives in Atlanta, Georgia with his beautiful wife and two daughters. He is in the process of writing his first children's book with his wife about honoring the amazing healing powers inside the body. For more information, go to www.livingagainstthegrain.org. Dr. Dan, how are you today? I am wonderful, and it's great to be here. It was great to see you in person a few weeks ago in Hoboken. It was, it's always great to see you. Yeah, especially in that venue and uh, overlooking the city. It's beautiful, yep. It sure is. So, as you know, I'm a chiropractor, and I love chiropractic, and it's been a huge part of my life since I was 11, 12 years old. Dr. Dan, can you tell the audience a little bit about your backstory, how you got involved in chiropractic? Yeah, I would love to. Um, I, uh, I was raised in a in kind of a typical medical type family. And uh, in fact, I have two brothers that are medical doctors. My mom's a nurse, uh, has been a nurse for 30 plus years. My sister's an occupational therapist. So I come from a big family. I've got seven brothers and sisters. And um, and I uh, got injured in high school playing playing uh, sports, pole vaulting and, and track. And I uh, well, kind of went the whole medical route and nothing was working, nothing was working. And, and lo and behold, I ended up at a chiropractor's office and it got me better. And uh, so I thought, you know what, I'm an athlete. I like to use my hands. I think that and he, he talked to me a little bit about what the profession, you know, consists of. And uh, I kind of moved that direction. But what I didn't know is when I got into chiropractic, I, I just thought it was a, a good, you know, alleviation for back pain because that's what it helped me with. But what I didn't know is there's this underlying philosophy that drives the, the, the entire profession and makes, makes us unique to, to you know other uh, healthcare professions, uh, particularly you know the the, the mo- modern medical model. So, um, so I, 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 I yeah. So I, my background is more of a um, experience, but because of the nature of my family, I was very, I was very you know, I, at first learning the philosophy of chiropractic, which I know we'll we'll get into a little bit here, but. Um, I was I was kind of resistant because like you know that's just not I I, I, I don't understand that it doesn't make us you know you, you I don't want to be one of those doctors that you know ne- doesn't necessarily subscribe to all the you know uh, view that I, I literally fought that but when I started to look at the evidence the philosophies of medicine I didn't want to look at how our bodies really work I started to study this thing and you start to look at man I, so I started to see it differently and lo and behold. Um, I'm, I be, I'm kind of an analytical guy, so I started looking at all the data and the research and science behind it, and, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's become amazing, and, and it's a mission of mine now that the rest of the world could get access to this thing called chiropractic, and, and I believe one reason why they, one major part of that is understanding what it's for, and that is uh, it's less to do about the back, and it's everything to do with about you know uh, all of human performance, so uh, it's a little bit of peek in, the, in my world there. So I'm assuming that's the reason why chiropractors are known for wanting to educate the public because we need to share with the public what true chiropractic is. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. Here's what I always say. I was going to, I was, when I was 17 years old, I decided I want to be a chiropractor in high school. And for five years, I studied chiropractic. Essentially, I studied biologies. And then I went to a uh, pre-chiropractic institution for my undergrad uh, and studied pre-chiropractic, not just biology, but pre-chiropractic. And then even my first year in chiropractic college, I I say this because I, I spent five years in chiropractic, but it wasn't until my fir- after my first year of chiropractic college that I really understood what chiropractic was, that there was a philosophy that we believe that there's uh, you know, an innate power within the body. And, 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 and the reason why I say that is for five years, I was in chiropractic, and I really didn't know what chiropractic was. 
So the rest of the public, they're not in chiropractic. And they, and, and they have little to understand what it is. So you're absolutely right. That's why we spend so much time. We're so passionate because we want them to understand it the way we do, or at least a little bit, uh, uh, just a, a part of the way we do, for one reason, Doc, and that is so that they can have access to it. You know, it's not, you know, we, we chiropractors, even if we, you know, we're known for, you know, you guys are always passionate. You're always trying to teach us something, right? But the reason is because we want you to have, we want you to have a life that, that you're not, you know, essentially a life of hope that you can understand things like we do, that you can utilize chiropractic the way it should be utilized and know that you can navigate through life with you and your family and, and not have to just be in fear that I'm waiting for that disease to happen or I'm waiting for that sickness to happen or when it does happen that I'm, I'm fearful that something that the worst of the worst versus then there's so much amazing that goes on in the body. And unfortunately, in our current culture, we don't we don't get that. So chiropractors, we, we, we really focus on educating you so that you get you get the most out of this thing called life and that you can feel confident and have hope in navigating you and your children um, in, in a way that uh, that abides by the natural laws of the body and that, and that there's science behind it. Well, well said. And let's let's go right there. It's been said that chiropractic is not scientific, yet you you know that's different. What can you share with us that proves chiropractic is extraordinarily scientific? Yeah, I, I think the one area that I would just encourage everybody to know, and, and because I come from a medical background, so um, I'm I'm always just like you know what's what's the gold standard? What's what's the what's the research say? What's the science say? Is is there proof behind why we would do that? And um, I would just I, I would I want you know just like all my patients, just like all the doctors that I talk to, all the students that I talk to, I, I want them to know that there is very clear evidence. The same level of evidence that say a, a medical doctor would have to subscribe to if he wanted to check a heart and 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 cholesterol and blood pressure and and even maybe prescribe drugs for that because he found a problem. The same level of evidence, uh, science and research that backs up why he would do that, chiropractors have. And not just from this, um, you know, uh, my, I've got a sore back and I can help it with an adjustment. But we're talking from, and we, you know, I'm sure you've maybe had on previous podcasts, you know, if you're an audience out there, you don't know what chiropractic or where it began. This isn't the first person to get adjusted by a chiropractor was, uh, was a guy that was deaf and got his hearing back in Davenport, Iowa. And then from there, you know, a bunch of people flew into Davenport that were deaf. And although all the deaf people weren't, you know, becoming uh, uh, hear, hearing again, couldn't, you know, becoming cured of that, what, what, what they were happening is they started to have hearts that were working better and lungs and, and kidneys, right? So, and then in 1918, there was a flu pandemic and people that were getting adjusted, you know, had 140th the death rate of those that didn't get adjusted in 1918. And that's what put chiropractic on the map. It wasn't for a bad back. It was actually for, you didn't die from the flu. You actually had a substantial increased immunity from being adjusted. And then from there on out, I mean, Chiropractors every week see amazing results with visceral systemic physiology, meaning hearts and lungs and immune system and digestion, fertility. And the reason for that is because of the spine's intimate relationship with the, with the central nervous system. And so one of the things I'm very passionate about is to make sure chiropractors, chiropractic students, and the public understand that, that, that not only is there an intimate relationship between the spine and the central nervous system and the brain, but when that spine is altered, it absolutely influences physiology. It influences uh, uh, your health in ways that we would have never drawn back to the spine. You know, we always say, you know, uh, I always, I'm, I'm in this mode right now, a bad back is actually a brain problem. If you've got a back problem, you've got a brain problem. And the evidence supports that. So what most of the public doesn't know is that, uh, unfortunately, they, 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 we've been taught that it's just about a bad back. Yeah, if you've got a bad back, if the drugs don't work, let's go, go to the chiropractor, maybe that'll work. What, what we need to know is, it improves everything. So, and it's not because the chiropractic's great; it's because the body's great. It's because uh, the, the the relationship of the spine to the brain. And when we start to understand that, now we see why. Why would a child and all these kids and families get benefits from chiropractic? Is because of that relationship. And so, um, I don't mean to get too heady. I, I, I get. I sit here. I'm like, man, I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, bore it out. If you're, you know, if you're listening out there, the one thing I, I guess to simplify it mostly is. Um, you know, there's a reason why, you know, this is funny how there's that saying, um, I remember hearing this on an interview one time and it caught my attention. Uh, like for instance, someone say my, my wife is my backbone, right? Or my husband is my backbone. That means that they're like one of the most important people in your life. Well, it's the same thing with the spine. You know, we chiropractors, you know, it's the backbone. The backbone is a crazy important, more reasons than, you know, than we ever knew before, but the science is now catching up and, and that's why people see great results with, with that better. 
So, so let's just let's just backtrack. So, what you're saying is there is specific science that supports chiropractic far beyond back pain, and list some of those conditions uh, that science has proven chiropractic helps with. Yeah, well, there was a study in 2011 that was done on a, uh, this guy in Japan. He used a three million dollar PET scan. So basically, he took these uh, he took these men and he put them underneath a PET scan, and half of them got adjusted, and half of them didn't get adjusted. And he measured their brain and the changes that saw in the brain. He took some other numbers like salivary amylase. You know, he took some muscle tone, uh, certain muscles, and then they measured the, the the glucose metabolism within the brain after adjustment compared to those who didn't get adjusted. And what he clearly found out unequivocally is that. When adjustment happened, when they adjusted the neck, that they, they, that there was a clear benefit to the brain, and and the clear benefit when you looked at that, when they look at it, when we look at it now, science shows us that it changes all the hormones in the body. So when you change these stress hormones through the hypothalamus, through the you know through the uh, uh, you know adrenal pathways, here's here's what happens. What happens is we we get a balance of hormones. So that spine. Is a relationship with the brain, and then that when, when you change the spine, you change the brain. When you change the brain, you change the hormones. When you change the hormones, you absolutely change human health. And so to, to list off some of the main things that, that, that chiropractic is related to, things like fertility, things like digestion, things like immune system, things like uh, all your uh, – um, uh, well, it even gets – you know, pain levels, right? Obviously, you know, people talk about pain, but pain, it goes pain just beyond a certain, you know, area. It actually goes globally, pain levels. Um, you've gotten concentration, uh, uh, kids' uh, growth and development, because everything is based on hormones, and, and we know that's a, a true fact. Nobody would disagree that hormones, what most people don't know is that brain is the thing that drives the hormones, but the spine actually drives the brain. So this is the beauty, and so um, I don't know if the, we, I could go on. You know, we could go on with a host of, of symptoms, but um, the physiology behind that is pretty, pretty intricate, and pretty cool. So, so I live in the northeast. You live in the southeast, and we're just kind of getting over uh, when people, quote unquote, get the flu and get sick and get fevers and stomach viruses. What you're telling the audience is, is that the chi- chiropractic and the chiropractic adjustment. And maximizing, maximizing the nervous system has profound effects on the immune system. Without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. It's one of the number one, number one things I mean, we know in our offices. One of the number one things, people, a lot of people you know, start to get adjusted. They're like, you know, I think this may be coincidence. And chances are they maybe didn't listen or they, they, they weren't open to hearing it at the beginning that chiropractic adjustments can influence everything from, you know, hearts to lungs to digestion to breathing to immune system. Uh, but the, you know they would say you know I used to get you know bronchitis a couple times a year well I don't get that anymore I used to get my uh, a cold once a month I don't get that ear infections I don't get that so yes without a shadow of a doubt and that was a crazy story 1918 there was a flu pandemic uh, 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 80 million people died worldwide 500,000 Americans died in a short period of time this was a pandemic and uh, what they found out in Davenport Iowa uh, 100 or sorry 50 medical doctors treated 5,135 cases of the flu with 274 deaths. Same city, same time, 150 chiropractors treated 1,635 cases of the flu with only one death. What the history shows us is during that time, this flu pandemic, when it was like we've never seen anything like that now, which is, I mean, people, essentially, if you got it, it was a death sentence. And, um, but those that were getting adjusted by a chiropractor had 140th the death rate by medical standards. But the history shows us out of 10,000 people treated chem, uh, chiropractically for the, or sorry, medically for the flu, out of 10,000 people treated, 925 people were dying uh, medically. Out of 10,000 people treated chiropractically for the flu, only 25 deaths. So this is the thing that put chiropractic on the map back in 1918. Now you flash forward. So if you're kind of like me, I ask the question, well, what happened? Why isn't chiropractic known for that now? And the reality is, is because there's a lot of things that happen. Vaccines came on the, you know, came on the scene in the 1940s, uh, as well as antibiotics. There were things that that we were led to believe were, you know, uh, solutions for those problems, um, outside of, uh, you know, what what was ha- what what history tells us or what what used to happen in, the, in, in previous. So then chiropractors, unfortunately, we went down the bad back route and kind of get our foot in the door. And unfortunately, um, now the majority of people don't understand what we're really really about. 
Yeah, I wrote a blog post way back when, and I called, did the 1918 flu pandemic save chiropractic? Because not only did it booster, boost chiropractic, it, it might have saved chiropractic as a profession because it was it was in its infancy at that point, and it could have been swallowed up easily by another profession, and that, and, and that flu pandemic might have saved what we know as chiropractic today. I, I just just because of some people in our audience might not know what the terminology is, can you explain what a chiropractic adjustment is? Yeah, a chiropractic adjustment is well. First, let's explain what a subluxation is because a subluxation is is the thing that a chiropractor adjusts. Um, and, and I say the thing. There's an entity. There's a you know uh, within the science. I don't make it as simple as possible. But the the, the body's the, the the spine is designed to be in a certain position and it's designed to move in a certain manner. And, um, and, and, and here's the, here's the kind of kicker, and this would be probably something new to a lot of you. In fact, I speak, uh, speak to a lot, I teach a lot of chiropractors. It's this new to a lot of them, unfortunately, um, is that the spine is not just this hard set of bones that surrounds soft neural tissue. So we've kind of been led to believe that, well, yeah, it's just kind of this hard bones and, and make you stand up straight and they keep you good posture and you should keep good posture because, because they're, you know, this hard bones, you don't want to malform or malposition. But the reality is the spine is a lot more important than that. The spine is essentially like an organ. And what we now know through the, the research is that, um, that, that in order for your brain to work properly, it needs movement from the spine. It needs information from the spine. So there's all these little neurons and there's all these little you know, electricity, essentially, to keep it real simple, it, happening from all the muscles, ligaments, and, and joints in the spine, in and around the spine. Very, very densely populated with, with a ton of neurology, meaning there's a lot of information going up into the brain directly from the spine. And so what we know is that spine has to be aligned and moving appropriately. And so unfortunately, throughout life, we go through life and there's these things called stressors. And I know people listen to this line, they don't have any of those. But for us, common folk have a lot of stressors in our lives all the way dating back. I mean, you could get, you know, there's three kinds of stressors, you know, emotional, physical and chemical. And these stressors add up. And uh, unfortunately, they can actually alter the position and health of a spinal vertebra or a, a, a you know, a global section of the spine. And when that happens, we call it subluxation. When a spine is a, a vertebra, rather, is not moving or aligned appropriately, right? When a, when a spinal vertebra is not moving or aligned appropriately, it is what we call subluxation. And that that abnormal alignment and, and abnormal uh, movement in that area uh, creates a disturbance into the brain, and that affects the central nervous system in a negative way. And kind of like I said before, stress stress hormones and this downward spiral to health. Unfortunately, the majority of the time, it goes unfelt. These aren't things that, you know, you know, one of our mentors, Reggie Gold, used to talk about, you know, I wish you could wear a light on your head, and every time you got subluxated, it went off, so you knew when to get adjusted. And, uh, but, you, but we don't, right? And, and, and it's just like blood pressure. You don't feel this stuff, and you don't feel uh, um, uh, these, these, these alterations in the spine we call subluxation. And so a chiropractor detects these with a very specific analysis and evaluation and finds out how healthy the spine is. And is there any subluxations, altered position, altered movement? And if so, puts a gentle force into the spine so that the body can actually make a correction of that and get, again, that area and that segment of the spine moving appropriately, aligned appropriately, so that feedback to the brain and from the brain is appropriate. So for one reason, so, you're, so the organs are getting all the right messages, period. That's, that's their biggest, yeah, the muscles can, you know, yeah, there's help with, you know, alleviation of pain of tissues. But I'm telling you, that's all a side, side note. The most important thing we do in chiropractic is make sure the organs are working well, right? So hearts, lungs, digestion, immune system. I, I, I rather, I, you know, I always ask my patients now, would you rather have a back problem or a brain problem, right? Would you rather have a back problem? Think about this if you're as a listener. Would you rather have a back problem or a brain problem? And a lot of us have had back problems, like, like you know, back pain stinks. You know, it's not fun. It literally affects every, you know, part of our lives. But I would rather have a back problem than a brain problem. What most of the public, in fact, the majority of the public have no idea about is that this subluxation, that alteration in the spine, that back issue is a brain problem. And when it's a brain problem, that means it's influencing all aspects of health. These are why kids that come in our offices with concentration problems, with, you know, on the autism spectrum, with growth problems, right, why they're seeing results through the adjustment because of the change in the brains that we're seeing that happen with an adjustment. This is why, obviously, Dr. No, you know, why we believe everybody deserves the right to have access to this. They, they deserve the right to know. But if we're waiting for bad backs to happen or we just think it's about back pain, we'll never go there, particularly we'll never take our kids there. 
and like my kids, you know, children, I know you're the same way, you know, been adjusted since birth for to, to not for pain, not for anything other than to make sure they're growing and developing the way they need to be. Well, well said, my friend. So you touched them on the philosophy of chiropractic. You've touched on the science of chiropractic. The adjustment is the artistic part of chiropractic, correct? Yes. Yep. And then your last point, you talked about chiropractic and children. And let me just lay it on the line. Do chiropractic, do kids need chiropractic care? And if so, why? Yeah, this is a, you know, it's always a, an interesting question where, you know, I speak to a lot lately. I've just took a lot of medical colleges and, and uh, PhDs and some of the top researchers in the country right now. And, and, um, and, and, and this question comes up, you know, and, and so um, I, there's a lot of different ways to attack this. And, and the bottom line is that with unequivocally, right, the unequivocal answer is, with it beyond a shadow of a doubt, right? If you want your children to, 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 to get the most out of life, to experience the greatest potential, to, um, to, to, to grow and develop in a manner that, that's the best of their potential, everybody's going to be a little bit different, but the best of their ability, then, uh, and, and let's take a step back. It's not about having chiropractic care. It's about having a, 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 a healthy nervous system. It's about having a healthy brain to body communication, period. It's about having a, a healthy uh, central nervous system, which is controlling all the hormones, which controls all their growth and development and learning and concentration. So here's the thing. The only way to do that is to have a healthy spine. In order to have a healthy spine, chiropractors are one of the only professions that focus our attention on having a healthy spine. And if it's not healthy, we have clear evidence to show that what we do actually can create a healthier and, and maintain that and sustain that throughout life. And so I do want to speak to the art of that because some, some of you will go in and you're like, you know, I've maybe had some experiences. I've had different experiences. I was on a one chiropractor. They said this. And that, and that art is important. You know, it's like some people will say, well, you chiropractor, some people do different. And I'm like, that's the beauty of chiropractic. If you go to 10 different pastors for marriage counseling, you're going to get 10 different probably things, right? They're going to get 10 different uh, uh, ways to do things. Not that they're bad. They're just the way that they do that, right? Everyone's got a little bit of, you go to 10 different psychologists for some sort of therapy, you're going to get 10 different ways to do it. You, you put the same uh, 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 object to paint for 10 painters and you're going to get different paintings out of it because there's an art to chiropractic. And so that's what I want to encourage the beauty of chiropractic is there is an art to it. We all do things a little bit different, but here's the one thing that we do do. Well, our, our main focus is to bring balance to the nervous system. And the only way to bring true balance to the nervous system is to make sure that spine is healthy. And so Unfortunately, these children that are coming out of the womb, and we know that it dates back. There's a great study in 1992 by a guy named Heiner Biedermann out of Germany showed clearly that 90% of kids being born today, and this was in 92, it's worse today, uh, 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 are subluxated or, or, or have an interference in the upper cervical spine because of how they were pulled out, it, particularly if there's any vacuum or, or C-section or any sort of uh, uh, stress, other uh, added stress at birth. Uh, but that's how we know these kids and children automatically uh, come into this world um, um, subluxated or, or need evaluated. Uh, it, it's been, again, it goes back to the, per, the the purpose, the importance of the spine, and ultimately the stresses that that our kids and our children are under is the importance of why they need uh, why they need evaluated on a regular basis. Can you dive just a little bit deeper because it's an interesting topic? Because I take care of kids that have learning issues and development and concentration issues. Can you dive a little bit deeper into how chiropractic can help a child? that has a diagnosis of ADD or ADHD or uh, ODD or whatever the other monikers they want to give these, yep. these quote-unquote diseases. Yep. Yeah. So what, what, what we know happens, and, and this is, um, you know, it's always interesting because, you know, gosh, you just think about how many moms out there. You may be a mom or dad out there, and uh, you've tried everything. And, and ultimately the things I'm going to tell you in the next couple of minutes here you know, your likelihood, the guard is up, and I get it, and I would be the same way. You know, I, I was like, no, great, there's no, I had somebody to talk to me about nutrition, and they told me this supplement, or they said stop eating this food, or they said, you know, go to this doctor, right, and, and, and you tried that, and it didn't have a lot of success, and so um, what I want to encourage you is, um, I've, I've looked at this thing, and there's a lot of different components to the puzzle of, you know, whether it be ADHD or autism or, you know, any anywhere on the concentration or learning disabilities and so forth. But here's what we do know, and, uh, and I really, really want to get this point across, is that we, there is no question about the relationship between the nervous system 
and these learning disabilities or ADHD or, or even autism spectrum disorders. There's no, that it's not even a, you know, anybody, any professional, anybody that's looked at any evidence supports the fact that, yes, this is a nervous system issue, right? So we've established that. So what most people don't know, and when I say people, I mean experts. What most experts don't know is the intimate relationship between the health of the spine and a healthy nervous system. And so what we know to be true is that when children are having these issues, attention, concentration, learning, right, that the nervous system is in a um, facilitated state. What we call, you know, there's two parts of the nervous system. And again, I, want, I don't want to, I want to keep it real simple, but there's two parts of the nervous system. One's a, well, a nerve, you know, one speeds up the nervous, uh, like speeds up all the processes. One slows down all the processes. And we need them. It's a balance. It's, it's a constant balance. Sometimes if you're, you know, in, the, in a fear mode or stress mode, we want to be able to, you know, have a heightened state and we want a, a blood to be able to get the external parts like that fight or flight in case we got to, you know, move or shake or run or, you know, fight. But, um, but what happens is that that's not a time for growth and rest and development and learning. And that's called the parasympathetic. thing. That's the one that slows it down. And so what we want is this balance, but the majority of time in order for a child to be growing and developing appropriately, they need to be in this rest, relax, digestive state. And so unfortunately, when there's an altered position, when we know there's subluxation, particularly in the upper neck, when there's a, a subluxation, this altered positioning and altered movement in the spine of a, of, a, of a vertebra, then we know it puts that nervous system into that stress response, or that heightened sympathetic dominant state or that fight or flight response. And unfortunately there, although good if you're running from a tiger or you're running from a bear, it's not good if you're trying to learn in a classroom or you're trying to actually t be patient or you're you know, you know, learning life's vital lessons or you're trying to you know, retain information or you're trying to just be calm. And, and right? So what chiropractor does or what a chiropractic adjustment is, it goes in and, it, and it, again, it removes the subluxation or reduces that subluxation, creates a health in that structure again, that segment. And when it does that, it restores the balance of the of central nervous system, the brain to the body. And when it does that, it takes that rest and digest, that relaxation system, and it increases it. That's how we increase uh, uh, all those, you know, uh, uh, attention and, and concentration, you know, uh, uh, factors. But but the one thing, you know, I, I always make this analogy for parents. If, if, if you know a child that's on the spectrum, like autism spectrum, one of the things they love right? One of the things they love is they love to wrestle. They love to kind of be roughhouse. They love to be squeezed. They love to be hugged, right? And the reason why is because when they're hugged, when there's pressure, it actually is very calming to their brain and the nervous system. They love uh, uh, like, 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 like a, a comforter, like a, a, if you have a comforter on their, bed, uh, on their bed, they love it to be very um, um, heavy, really weight, because pressure is actually calming to the nervous system. And actually there's certain receptors that pick that up and it can be calming. So one of the things that is similar to the adjustment, the adjustment creates this movement within the, 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 you know, the spine and other areas of the body and the joints. And that actually is calming to the brain. It gets the body into that parasympathetic and out of that sympathetic. And so uh, this is the thing, and you see I get pretty passionate about this because it, it just is there's so many kids. I got a five-year-old and a two-year-old girl, and I just – you just, I just think about, you know, kids not having that opportunity and it's not their fault. And then parents, it's not your fault. Like you're going to, you're trying to do the best thing. And unfortunately it's, it's just, it's just falling on deaf. Usually you're, you're, you're going and over and over and over again. I thought this worked. I thought this would work. And I'm not saying it's one, just one thing, but that spine must be addressed. And, and if not, unfortunately, there's so many studies out there right now showing the, the relationship that, and these subluxations that are being missed or, or not being taken care of because parents just don't know. Oh, that's beautifully said. Let's, let's, yeah, that's, you, you hit that 100% on uh, the nail right on the head. Thank you for that. And I know our audience, I know that's going to resonate with our audience as well. How about w one other thing that, that I work with, that I work with my patients? How about posture? How important is posture on your overall health? Yeah, this is one of those that, you know, the, the old adage, you know, uh, you know, your mom says, yes, sit, sit up straight and stand up straight. And, and uh, that couldn't be more, you know, true than ever. I mean, that is so, you know, there, there was a new article just last year, 2015, that came out that said uh, uh, sitting is the new smoking. And the reason why you dive into the study, and basically it just goes to show that all the negative influences that sitting, it's not just sitting, it's the lack of movement and the lack of, of position. 
And uh, when, when there's lack of movement within the body and the spine, and there's a lack of, of position that, that, you know, proper positioning of the body and the spine, um, we, it leads to bad health. It just does. And so uh, posture is so vital. In fact, there was a study in 2004 that came out that showed they took 4,200 men, they followed them for 20 years, and basically those that had lost um, uh, three or more centimeters of height, or sorry, millimeters, not centimeters, millimeters, very tiny amount, right? Three or more. So over this 20 year period, those that had lost three or more millimeters of height compared to those who had lost only a millimeter or less were 64% more likely to suffer from coronary artery disease than those who did not have that uh, loss of height. And so what it goes to show is that your, you know, your, your posture and your height and the, and the loss of height, right? Because bad posture is going to create, you know, bad, uh, uh, the, the, your discs are going to be altered. It can dehydrate discs and so forth. So the key was posture and keeping that height. How do you do that? Well, we know chiropractic can do that. We know postural exercise. We know movement. We know just exercise in general. Um, so, yeah, we have to be aware of your posture. It's one of the things that teach my patients more than anything else is like if you're sitting, 60% of the workforce is sitting. So what do you do, right? Well, stick a, you know, make sure you got a good lumbar supporter. Stick a, stick a, a, a huge towel or roll at the bottom of your, you know, in between the, the you know, the, in your low lumbar, but, but so that it forces your shoulders back. It forces your shoulders back. You know, get your, get your computer screen level or, or a little bit higher, neutral, or a little bit higher. Take every 45 minutes or at least an hour or every hour. Get up, drink enough water so you have to go to the bathroom. It's these little things that you can just add to your day that's going to change. You know, we don't see it in a day or a week or even a month or a year, but you do that for 10, 15, 20 years. This is where we see posture just wreaking havoc on people's lives, and they, and, they, and they don't know. There's another study, 2013, Journal of Gerontology. This study came out. This was crazy, Doc. Listen to this one. So those, they took four groups, and the, the group that had the worst posture compared to the group that had the best posture, right? And they, and they did all the, the, the percentages, like basically group one was the best posture, group two, three, four. Group two, compared to group one, had a 45% increased risk of uh, having a, a disability. Activities to daily living would be altered or they wouldn't be able to do something that would be, you know, something like go to the bathroom or put, put on their clothes, right? So activity daily living, 45% higher risk of not uh, of being disabled compared to group two, just based on posture, right? Group one to group two. Group three to group one had a, over 200, like I think it was 70 some percent. But listen to this, the group that had the worst posture compared to the group that had the best posture, the group that had the worst posture had a 393% increased risk of being disabled or having activities daily living that they were not capable of doing purely based on one thing and that was their posture. So if we don't think posture is a huge deal, I mean it's like, you know, you look at, you know, older people, the worse their posture is, I can guarantee you not only are they not doing an activity daily living that they should be or would love to be doing, that they, sh you know, obviously would, it's just a living, it's things that, that we need to do, but I guarantee that also their organs are involved, right? Some sort of organ is shutting down because of the intimate relationship, again, with the posture and the spine to our organ system. And so I can't encourage you enough. This is where chiropractic, regardless of technique, every chiropractic adjustment uh, uh, and every chiropractor that makes an adjustment improves the posture of that human being, right? Because it's the writing reflexes, it's the way our nervous system works. So this is where you combine everything from, from you know, po proper posture care to, you know, where you're sitting, how you're setting up a workstation, to have an exercise, to stretching, to yoga, to chiropractic adjustments, all those things, you know, to do one thing, to avoid that disability that uh, is, again, so, so closely connected to posture. So, Dr. Dan, let's let's summarize. What are the, and we hit on all of them, what are the top reasons that you think people of all ages should see a chiropractor on a regular basis for? Um, you know what? I, I, I hear, and I actually probably didn't, didn't hit on a couple of them. The one thing, the one thing that excites me right now, what's happening in chiropractic, and with some of the things that the, the research is going on, um, you know, some of the buzzwords right now in just healthcare and wellness is uh, well, and you guys speak a lot about it, anti-aging. Yes, right? yes. Anti-aging. So, so just look at this. Like there was research done that if you combine a couple of studies, so Elizabeth Blackburn's new, uh, 2009 Nobel Prize winner, she came out and said one of the number one reasons to no, number one ways to decrease the the, the telomere. Right, the size of the telomere, which is an indicator of, of projection of aging and how quick we're going to age, the ne one of the number one ways to do that is to increase your catecholamines. Well, if you look at what a subluxation does, a subluxation, which is, again, that altered movement, alt altered position of the spine, it increases the catecholamines. It increases these stress hormones. So we know that an altered spine, altered positions, that subluxation, that therefore, in a chiropractic adjustment, 
helps to either maintain the proper position of telomeres or increase that telomere, which means you're actually going to age, you know, uh, not age as quickly. So, you know, I know we spend a lot of time and there's supplements and there's wraps and there's, you know, all kinds of nutrition things that can help anti-aging. But there's, the, I, again, it goes back to, it isn't because chiropractic is so great. It's because the spine's intimate relationship with the nervous system is why we have in, influence those. Another one is epigenetics. Epigenetics is, you know, the, the way we express genes. You know, we may have a certain gene, but it's how we express it. And we're finding out it's the environment that, that makes that expression turn on or off that gene. Well, one of the ways that you do that within the body, or we measure that within the body, is how whether, whether or not a, 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 a gene gets methylated, right? So the methylation of genes. Well, we also know that, that the, an increase of catecholamines will change the methylation. Therefore, the way we'll express our genes has everything to do with the central nervous system, which again has a direct relationship with the power of an adjustment. So these are the things that excite me because it's, it, we're not talking about bad backs or bad shoulders or bad necks. It is clearly an indication that when, when, it, when adjustment happens, we influence so much more, let alone immunity. You know, five times some of the greatest research that, you know, uh, uh, improve immunity with no neg negative side effects, address pain five times better than the best thing medicine has to offer based on you know, NSAID studies and, and versus chiropractic and acupuncture, uh, stop reverse postural bone degeneration, regeneration of brain tissue. So these are the things, again, coming down the pipe that really excite me that we know have happened. It's just harder to measure because they're silent in nature. Um, and uh, most people, don't, you know, if you don't really understand it, you just would say, well, I got adjusted and made me feel better versus, man, I got adjusted my epigenetic expression, right? I, I know certain genes are turning on and some turn it off, but it's fighting. It's because of the power that's in the body that innate intelligence is being expressed the way it needs to be, just like you know, two cells come together and make a human being. Uh, that same power is always in us. It resides in us. The chiropractic adjustments, removing interference, make sure that brain and body is communicating, and uh, and amazing things happen. So um, yeah, so uh, you can see I get pretty pretty excited about this. Listen, Doc, I'll know I've done my job when someone gets off my table or comes up and tells me. Well, wow, that chiropractic adjustment was great. My epigenetic expression is functioning <laughs> much better now. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we're, we're coming down to the end. I, I know you're working on a book with your wife. How about giving us, giving the audience a little bit of an insight on that? Yeah. So here's the thing, and, and it kind of came out of um, it's 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 come out of just uh, you know, how many books you know you you you, you know, there's like you you read so many books to your children and and. Uh, and we read so many books to our children. One of the things that we, you know, really are heightened and just sensitive to is just, um, you know, we just, you know, like that. You know, you know, I don't like to, you know, uh, protect everything that goes in the brain. I, I want to make sure they're exposed to and, and make choices accordingly. But one of the things that we found out, like, 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 and don't get me wrong, like, I don't mind some of the messaging, but like, like, a, for instance, like a Dr. McStuffins, you know, that that, and basically all it's saying is let's 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 test you and let's. And there's some good things that I talk about eating your fruits and vegetables and there's good things. But what we found out is that there's nothing out there right now where a child, a, a young child, a two-year-old or one-year-old or a five-year-old or eight-year-old can, can read a book and get put into their mind how the body really works. Meaning when I, when I, when it cuts your arm, right? If you have a cut and you go outside and you fall off your bike and you got a cut, right? I want, we want children to understand that the healing doesn't come from the, the, you know, any sort of antibiotic ointment. It doesn't come from the Band-Aid that put it on there. It came from that innate intelligence within the body. And so why that's important is because, well, now they got a fever. And now instead of looking at the fever as something so negative, we're saying, no, your body, we're, we're high-fiving them. And, and though it's you know, sometimes hard to see them suffer, but we realize it's for the greater good because that body knows more. So we're creating this book to point out all the great things about the body and how symptoms like runny nose and cough and a fever and, and diarrhea and, the, and, and, and throwing up, how although they're not fun, they're actually a sign that the body is doing the right thing at the right time. And if we didn't have those, so we're you know, figuring out ways. My wife's a teacher. She's got a master's degree in education. She taught for about seven or eight years at the kindergarten. So she's kind of got that point. We're like, let's, let's, let's combine this and, and, and try to get this message to children because parents, you know, they're going to read their books. They're going to read books anyway. Why not have one that can can fill their mind with this beauty and, and looking at the power that is in the body and not just that the body's broke down and then it gets this fever and that's a bad thing because that's not it's totally not true and and so we want to cultivate a whole new generation and I think the time is now because there's so much information and people looking at wellness and you know, look at your you know podcasts you know you know tens and tens and thousands of people listening to this stuff 
And, uh, and it's time people want the truth. And the truth is, is that if you honor this greatest power, right? So, so I, no matter where I go, I speak about it all the time. The greatest doctor is not at the emergency room. The greatest doctor is not the chiropractor making adjustments. The greatest doctor is not the one in the laboratory doing research. The greatest doctor is the one that's inside, period, hands down. The greatest doctor is the doctor that created two cells and made them into you know, 80 trillion cells within about 10 months and, and, and created life. The greatest doctor is the one that creates millions of cells every second when a laboratory, oh, we've never done it. We, ne we can't, we've never made a cell from scratch ever. The greatest minds of ever, and I'm not saying it's bad that the greatest minds, it's just that there's a certain intelligence that we can't even measure fully but but what we can do is we can honor that, we can respect it, and we can seek to remove inter interference to that greatest power, and that's what chiropractic is about. So the book isn't, isn't about chiropractic necessarily. It's about just honoring that power and looking at the body and, and navigating children through, through life with hope and saying, well, I'm, I'm, that's an interesting way to look at it, but now I have hope. I'm not waiting for sickness or disease to happen and going to you know, treat that like the enemy of war with drugs. We're actually going to say, well, there, there may be something cool to this. Let's figure out how to honor that so that we can get the best experience in life, particularly as it relates to our kids. Well, I think our audience knows why you're called the chiropractic advocate now. Yeah. Any last, last words? I, uh, no, I, my last word is this, is if you're a parent out there, I know – we live in a world right now, and uh, thank goodness for podcasts like this. We live in a world right now where it, 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 I get it. It can be confusing, and, and it can be uh, hard to, to, you know, like this, and you're pulled in all kinds of different directions. You want to do the right thing, and, and then you're just worried about it. It's like, I just want to get dinner on the table and make sure kids are dressed and right, and I get that. What I, wanted, what I want to just encourage you is that it's easier than you think. And, but, but, but my biggest encouragement is to start to understand this, this, this power that's in the body because although it sounds cliche – like, like when you start to understand that more, you start to get it. You make decisions differently, and uh, and I'm not saying it happens overnight. But what I am saying is, stay the course. You're doing better. When I my, my pastor always said this, you're doing better than you think you're doing. Just by you listening to this podcast right now, you are in the upper echelon. You're doing better than you think. So I am so honored that I you would even listen to me. That you listen to this podcast because, like Doctor Noah and the other doctors that I hang around with, our, our objective is to make the world a better place. And we have this unique gift. That, that, and that is chiropractic and that is natural healing and, and, and we want everyone to experience it. So stay plugged in. It's about getting better little by little. It's never being about being perfect, but you're doing great. Stay the course and, and, and continue to learn. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today, Dr. Dan. My name is Dr. Noah DeCoyer, your co-host, and you're listening to the Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast. If you like what you've heard today, please share this with your friends and family and encourage them to subscribe on iTunes. You can sign up for our incredible weekly email at www.centerforepigeneticexpression.com and please let me encourage you to check out our first project, Summit, at www.painreliefproject.com and our next project is nearly complete and registration is open at www.antiagingproject.com. Lastly, help us help you and leave us a review on iTunes. Thank you and as my oldest son Hayden says, be awesome and never unawesome.